and thank you for tuning in to Spencer's Climate Change. How skewed are we? Really? This project started last year when my dad was developing a web series about entry painters in Canada and developed more recently when I was working on a school project about the Arctic. One thing I discovered was that the polar bears in Canada are in serious trouble and may face extinction because of loss of their habitats due to the effects of climate change. The ice is melting, people. According to Polar Bears International, polar bears have evolved for a life on the sea ice, which they re rely on for reaching their seal prey. But the Arctic sea ice is rapidly melting due to climate change affecting the Arctic ecosystem, including seals and walruses. For polar bears, sea ice losses mean reduced access to food, drop in body condition, lower cub survival rates, increase in drowning, increase in cannibalism, loss of access to denning areas. Scientists predict that as the Arctic continues to warm, two thirds of the world's polar bear could disappear within this century. So after finding this out, I went to my dad to let him know what I found because I knew he'd be interested. That it, that's him trying to figure out another piece of a video gear. Anyways, he said... What's that you say? Yeah, I know. And Canada, like other Western countries, are basically responsible for this because of our reliance on fossil fuels. And then he said... You know, polar bears aren't the only species to be impacted by climate change. It's people too. People like you and me. And especially the people who live in coastal regions around the world. In fact, you may want to take a look at the plight of the people in Kiribati who live in the South Seas. So look into it, I did. And you should too. Cause this is serious. So listen up, people! Wikipedia tells us that the Republic of Kiribati, as it is written, or Kiribati, as it is pronounced, is an island nation in the Central Pacific Ocean. The nation comprises of 33 atolls and reef islands and one race coral island called Banama. <laughs> Almost sounds like bananas. I love bananas, but I digress. So what was I saying? Oh yeah, they have a total land area of 800 square kilometers and are dispersed over 3 million square kilometers. Their spread straddles the equator at the 180th meridian. Although the international dateline is indented to bring the Lion Islands in the same day as Kiribati Islands, the permanent population is just over 100,000. Half living on this skinny little Terra Atoll. Terra is gonna be the focus of this video cause it's where this gentleman and I mean that in the truest sense of the word lives. For low-lying atoll island nations like my country, climate change is an issue of survival with the very real possibility of our nation disappearing under the ocean within the century. What I want to share with you is that even before that happens, we are already experiencing extreme high tides and more severe storms on an unprecedented unprecedented magnitude. Damage to homes and severe inundation of the coastline and consequent damage to food crops and potable water are now becoming more frequent events. Thank you, Mr. President, or I should say Mr. Ex-President, as your term is now finished. Perhaps you can tell us 
a little more about your plate. Well, our future is at stake. I keep saying this, and it's a, it's not a complicated analysis. The um, the, the the science is saying that uh, based on the the report, fourth assessment, and the fifth assessment report of the uh, intergovernmental panel on climate change, that within this century there will be a certain rise in sea level, and uh, that's far more than our islands can can take. But um, Already we are feeling impacts which really are well beyond the rise in sea level. Okay, we're getting flooding, we're getting storms which we never did get. If you need more, there is this. So that is the, the situation that we are in. So what does government do? At the international level, we continue to call for mitigation. That is important, if not for us, for everybody else, for the whole of humanity. In that report, the fourth assessment report, the IPCC also stated that for the frontline state, it might be too late because the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere is at such level that the, the impact will still be felt maybe within this century or, or further we can't reverse the trend. That is what science uh, was telling us and is telling us. And now we know that the projections of the IPCC were conservative as well. So we're expecting the impact to be higher than what they projected in that report. So if that were to happen, what are our other adaptation options? Earlier on, our government, our government kept shouting at the world to do something about climate change. Reduce your emissions or else we will disappear. We know now that nobody heard that voice. Our voice is very insignificant in the scheme of things. We asked the, we pointed a finger at the emitters and challenge them to open their borders for our people and take all our people in. We know nobody heard that voice. So our government had a rethink, said, okay, it's, this is not going anywhere. So we need to, to have a relook at our relocation strategy. And this is how the the migration with dignity came in. So my dad is right. This is terrible. Where all, where all, are all those people going to live when the sea covers their homeland? Maybe Canada. We have a lot of land. Sure, it can be cold, but maybe with the global warming, we will become warmer so those folks might be okay here. I need to make a phone call. Dad, do you have Justin Frudo's phone number? No? How about Premier Nolly? No? That's okay, I'll just Google it. Never mind. So my friends in YouTube, let's start calling your MPs, MLAs, your, your elected officials, and maybe even the Pope. Carbon tax is a start. And if you are still wondering about the plight of our Canadian polar bears, there's this. Uh, in 2007, a research team that I led at the U.S. Geological Survey uh, projected that by the middle of the century, in 50 years, uh, we could probably lose two-thirds of the world's polar bears. So we expect by mid-century, if we continue on the greenhouse gas emissions course that we're on now, uh, we could lose that many bears uh, by the middle of the century. We expect that there probably would still be some, but the projection went on to say that by the end of the century, the prognosis for uh, uh, extinction uh, worldwide was much, much uh, more likely.
watching. See you next time. Bye.